is important now. This is not only just the tourist attraction, it's real thing. Uh, and all of these casks and vats are full of wine, and it has, we have here the best wine that we have. Uh, this is what we are, what we can see here, this is a small part of what we have. Because if you are the first time here in Portugal, you have probably noticed here to the north, we have really, really lots of wine. Actually, here in Villanova de Gaio, we are standing here this moment, we have the biggest amount of wine per square meter in the world. And why it's so? First of all, because the port wine was shipped from the Porto, and that's why we call it port wine, it's from the name of the city. And also because when we have a vineyard, we do not have vineyards here, uh, that place is not actually uh, the best conditions to age the wine because of the temperature changes. Here we are very close to the Atlantic Ocean, it gives us moderate and humid climate that is just perfect to age the wine in the casks. Still in the lodge, you can see that we have very thick walls that protect us from possible temperature changes. We have this tub of water, it's just water, it's not hot one yet. We have a humidity inside the lodge. And if you look at our windows, they look like dirty, not because they are dirty, they're simply shadowed to make special enough your sun rays to enter and to destroy the atmosphere. Because it has to be quite dark, quite humid and it has to be the same temperature during the year to age the wine. So in the beginning of our visit I'm going to explain a little bit about our history and I'm going to talk with you about our different types of barrels and different types of styles of the port wine. We're going to visit a very interesting collection and then after that we slowly pass to the tasting the wine with the knowledge of the wine. Right a bit. Lolek and can do a, you put on P, do you put on P? P mode, P mode. Huh? Auto ISO. Wow, they went out. Big drums. Ibrahim. The location. We are always talking about the history of two families. The first family, of course, the Grams themselves. There were two brothers, William and John, who came to Portugal in 1820 from Scotland. And at the beginning, they had nothing to do with the port wine. They were Scottish merchants and they were investing into the textile. And then the legend says that they got the payment not with the money but with the port wine. And so they had a chance to taste it and they also loved it so much, they decided first of all to start shipping it and after that to also to produce the port wine. And thus in the 1890s they built our principal estate that's called Quinta dos Malvedos. When I say Quinta in Portuguese it means estate or vineyard. And at the same time they built this very same lodge where we are standing at the moment where we are aging the wine. 
The second family we are always talking about is the Symington family. And the very first Symington, Andrew James Symington, he came to Portugal in 1882 and he started to work for the Grams. He didn't look like this, like we have here on the image, because he was very young. He was only 19 years old. And like usually young people are, he was quite ambitious. And so after a while he decided he has enough knowledge, enough experience, that he can start by himself. So he went out from the company and two families existed at the same market for quite a while until in the 1970s the Grams had financial difficulties. And what they did? They went to the Symington and the Symington it was quite a symbolic moment for them because the very first Symington starts the history of the house from the Grams and so they decided to buy the family. At this moment, so we belong to the Symington family estate, this is the name of the company and this is a family business. These five men that you can see on the right side are those people who at this moment are at the top of the company. They are the brothers and they are the cousins. And here it's written, it's the fifth generation, it's not in the fourth generation. The fifth generation, almost there, we are waiting for them, but they still need a little bit more time to learn more about the fourth one, about also administration to be finally at the top of the company. So when we are talking about the Symington, the Grams is not the only company that belongs to them. They also have other companies. And here we have the list. Cabarns, Dallas, Wars, Quinta do Vesuvio, El Dano. El Dano here is the only one that does not produce a port wine. They produce a table wine, but from the same region. If you might know already that the vineyards are not here, we do not have vineyards outside of the lodge, we have to bring wine here. So if you look here at this map, and you can see over there there is a portal and on the other side of the river, Villanova de Gaia, we are standing at this moment and more than 100 kilometers towards Spain, there is a very special region that we call the Douro region that is separated from us by three mountains, Serra de Alvaro, Serra de Marau, and Serra de Montemuro and they create here a kind of a microclimate when summertime is very hot and also very dry the temperature can go up to 40 degrees, sometimes even more and in the winter time, the temperature, average temperature here is about 5 degrees from the mean. Here the grounds have five estates. Quinta dos Malvedos, our main one, first one and principal one. Also we have Quinta da Tua, Quinta da Vila Valle, Quinta dos Lagos, and Quinta do Val de Malhares. When we're talking about the Simitin families, they have 28 estates that produces wine. And if you look here, you can see that these estates are located right in the center because we say this is a golden center. If we go towards Spain border, it will be already too hot. If you go towards the mountains, it's not really hot enough. So here in the center is just the right location to have the great port. This place is also very interesting because this uh, region was the first demarcated region in the world. And what does it mean? If I have my estate, if I have my vineyard here, 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 or any place outside of this green line, and if I have all the conditions to call my wine a port wine, I have no right to do so. It has to be only inside this green border, it's just the same situation like Cognac or Champagne in France. This place is also very interesting for its soil, it's a schist, it's a very rocky soil that from one point gives us a very nice drainage, but from another side it uh, doesn't have a lot of organic masses. And what does it mean? Our yields, our harvests are the lowest in the world. We cannot produce in a big quantity. That's why everyone is trying to fight for the right location to have a good quality of the product. We have about 40 types of grapes that are allowed to use to produce a port wine. These four are the main ones. They are typically Portuguese type of the grapes. Some of them are used only to produce a port wine. Torriga Nacional, this type of the grapes, uh, it's quite common type here in Portugal. If you have already tasted the um, table wine, you have probably noticed that in Portugal we love to blend several types of grapes inside one bottle. And many times Torriga Nacional is used like the basis of the blend. Also it's a basis of the blend and the port wine.